This video is proudly sponsored by McGraw-Hills Access Engineering. You ever find yourself struggling class and you need just a little bit more help? You need to see worked out solutions. You need to see video solutions. In classes such as statics, solids, thermo, dynamics, material science, then Access Engineering may be for you. So go check out Access Engineering, link in the description below, and get the help that you need today. Now, on with the video. Hey friends, welcome back. We're here today, we're talking about trusses. We talked last time about the method of joints, and today we're talking about the method of sections, okay? The method of sections. I have a truss for you here. This is called a Howe truss. That's just the guy that, that designed this particular truss. And they want us to find the force in members G, H, H, E, and D, E, and also state whether those members are in tension or in compression. As you know, when we do truss problems, that's a new thing for us. We have to tell whether it's in tension or compression. And remember, tension members are always pulling on the joint, and compression members are always pushing on the joint, okay? So, <clears throat> first question. How do I know to use the method of sections or the method of joints? How do I know? The answer is simple. If they ask you for very specific members, then you need to be thinking to yourself, method of sections. If they ask me, find every member in the truss, then I might as well use the method of joints. That's the easiest thing to do, okay? So how do you use the method of sections? When you see particular ones, okay? And what I like to do here is, um, is highlight the ones that they're asking me about. So they're asking me about uh, G, H, H, E, and D, E. So here's G, H up here. I'm just gonna kind of make them blue. Okay, so that one, uh, H, E is this guy. Okay, and DE, which is this one here, okay? Just to kind of remind myself which members they're talking about, okay? So I have written you a recipe over here. Uh, we like recipes, don't we? If you follow this recipe, you can do method of sections, piece of cake, right? Step one, find global equilibrium, okay? Now global equilibrium is, that's just for the reaction forces, okay? So where this thing is hooked to the globe, where is it hooked to the globe? At point A, and point F, okay? Over here at F is a roller, so guess what? There's a normal force over there, we'll just call him Fy. And then over here is a pin connection, okay? It's got an Ax and an Ay. Now, right away I don't see any forces in the X direction, and so this is like a good friend over here. He's there when we need him. We just don't need him right now, okay? So. He's zero, okay? So how can I find um, AY and FY, okay? Now, if since this is a symmetric truss, if the load was symmetric, I could have just divided it in two and said, okay, you got half and you got half. But the load is not symmetric, and so we're going to have to write a moment equation. So I'm going to go up here and do global, okay? So here comes global. Okay? And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the moment at point A, okay, this being positive, okay, so I'm going to take the moment here, okay, and I get, I'm going to go over here first, Fy, whoop, rotating me positive, so Fy times 2, 4, 6, 8, so 8Fy, and then the 7 is rotating me negative, right, times 2, 4, 6, so minus 7 times 6, and then the four rotates me negative. The nine does too, doesn't it? So four times four, so minus four times four, and also minus nine times two. Okay? So what is that? All right, here we go. On, clear. 42 plus 16 plus 18 equals... 76 divided by 8 equals 9.5. So Fy equals 9.5. And that's a kips, which we know is a kilopound, a thousand pounds, right? And so the total downward stuff is 9 plus 7 is 16 is 20, right? So the total upward stuff has to be 20, right? So if this guy is 9.5, okay? 
then a y has to be 10.5. Okay? Because 10.5 plus 9.5 is 20 going up, and then I got 20 going down. Okay? And all that is is the sum of the force in the y. That's all that is. I just did the sum of the force in the y in my head. Because I'm like super smart. Okay. <laughs> Next. Next bit, okay? Step two. Cut through the members of interest. Now, the members of interest are these ones that they want us to find over here. G-H, H-E, and D-E. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make me a, I'll make a squiggle cut line. I'm going to cut the truss through there. Okay. Now, to section something means to cut it. Okay, if I go out and section a beam, then I cut through the beam and I look at the cross section of it where I cut it in half. All right, so it says next... Cut through the members of interest. Note, do not cut through more than three members because in the method of section, we have this, the sum of the forces in the X, the sum of the forces in the Y, and we now have the moment is back, okay? So that's about some point. I don't care which point you pick. I shouldn't put A. I should just put mm, O for just whatever point you want, right? Um, so... Those are the three equations that we have available to us. So if you cut through more than three unknowns, you're not going to have enough equations to solve for it. So in this case, I cut through one, two, three. All right. So draw the left side or the right side. Next one says draw the free body diagram of the easiest side. I tell my students, be lazy, okay? Draw the easiest side. And it doesn't matter which one you draw. You're going to get the exact same thing. So let's draw that side over there. Okay, so I'm going to draw that free body. Um, here's the this triangle, and then it has a force here, one here, and one there. So there's my three members. Now, on the method of sections, I don't generally try and get these directions correct. I always guess them all in tension. And then we'll let our math Sort it out. If I get a negative for one, then, hey, it was really in compression. I, I guessed it in tension. It was really in compression. No big deal. Now, let me put the other forces on here. So, we've got over here 9.5 kips. And then this is uh, HG. This is uh, HE. And this guy is DE. Okay. So, let me do, I'll just label these. This is G and this is E. Okay, and then also there's a seven kip right there. So any forces on that side of the truss that I draw, I have to put on my free body, all of them. Okay, now the next step says solve. Well, yeah, because look what you've got here. This is just a little old normal statics problem, just a regular old statics problem. Okay, so if I take the moment at point E, being positive, what do I have? Who gets knocked out if I take the moment at E? Well, the seven kips gets knocked out, DE gets knocked out, HE gets knocked out, and the only one left is HG, which rotates me positive. So HG times how far away? Well, from point E all the way up to there is two. And then I've got this guy, this 9.5, which also rotates me positive. And how far away is that guy? Well, he's also two. Okay, so I can divide everything through by two, and I get uh, HG is equal to negative 9.5 kips. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that I assumed HG in tension, but HG is really in compression. Now, you can leave it alone. You can leave it just like this, and then every other equation that you write from here on out, every time you use HG, you have to put in negative. For me, I think that leads my students to a lot of mistakes. So what I would say is when you get a negative, right, go ahead and fix it. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to fix it. Right, that, a lot of people would say just leave it alone and put a negative in. I think it's better, you'll, you'll have less errors if you just, just fix your free body diagram when you see one that's backwards. So there's HG. He's in compression. And you'll notice 
Well, I should have done this. I should have left him a positive and made him a negative, right? So because he's going the negative direction, which is called a negative rotation, and now it's fixed. So there's HG. That's one of the three things that they asked me to find. Okay, that was good. Now what? Well, now I can do, I can just do something simple here and I can do this. The sum of the forces in the y direction. Okay, I like the next equation to just have one unknown in it. And since DE is in the x direction, he's not going to be in the y equation. So the only one in the y equation is going to be HE. Ooh, you know what we need there? We need an angle, don't we? We need this angle right here. Okay, this angle right there. And we've got this little triangle that's one on this side. No, sorry. It's two on this side. Ooh, it's two on that side. I know what that angle is, don't I? It's 45 degrees, isn't it? Okay, so in the y direction, what do I have here? Well, I've got 9.5 going uphill. Okay, I've got seven kips going downhill. And then I've got uh, going uphill over here, All right? This guy has two components and the Y component is H E sine 45. And that's going uphill. So plus H E sine 45. Looks like my direction is going to be backwards again, doesn't it? So move the seven to the other side on seven minus 9.5 is negative 2.5 divided by 0 0.707. So HE is equal to negative 3.34. Okay, I guessed him in tension. Guess what? He's really in compression, okay? Really and truly he's in compression. I'm just gonna change that to a negative. Doop. Compression. All right, so now I know you, this guy is 9.5. I know you, this guy is 3.34. And I'm looking for you, DE, that's easy. One more step. Some of the forces in the X. And what do I have in the X direction? I have HG, which is 9.5. And again, if I didn't correct that, I would have had to leave it in the negative direction so I would have had to have a minus, a minus. And see, that's just confusing. Um, it's easier if you fix it, I think. All right, in the, in the positive x direction, I have this guy, 3.34. So plus 3.34 times the cosine of 45. And one more is DE, and he's in the negative direction. Okay, so I guessed all three of them. It looks like DE is the only one I guessed right. So 9.5 plus 3.34 times 0.707 is 11.86. So DE, 11.86 kips. And guess what? That one's in tension. Okay, and that's it. That's the method of sections. So if you follow this simple little, little uh, recipe I have for you over there, man, these problems are easy. Just cut through the members of interest, take it apart, draw the free body diagram on the side. Now remember this, you don't find anything out about these ones that you didn't cut. If you don't cut a member, you don't find out what's inside of it. So don't worry about the ones that you did not cut because they're the sum of the force in those is zero and you're not going to find anything out about them. So. That's all there is to it. I hope this helps and come on back. We'll do another one.